Hello. So um, today we are we are having a Q and A in relation to the Wikimedia Hackathon in Europe next year. Uh, we are starting with a new process this year, uh, trying to make it more open, documented, participative, etc. Let's see how it goes. Um, the fact is that if if I'm not mistaken, we have currently five potential locations interested in organizing this event, and because there were more and more questions flying around with emails, mailing lists, etc., uh, we decided to have this Q&A um, with basically two goals. One meta goal is, is to help you uh, working as, well, basically having to work only what is really needed to make your candidature, candidature shine. Um, or also to help you realize that maybe next year is not for you and you prefer uh, another year. So there's going to be many hackathons in the future. So I think that, that would be the main two goals. And also know a bit each other. So uh, as a side effect, this call is having many people interested in technical events for Wikimedia, which is something great in itself. Um, OK, so we have uh, two pages of reference. Uh, one is uh, the. I'm going to post the URLs now at the, at the Hangout page. One is the wiki page, hackathons at mediawiki.org. And another is an etherpad that was just created right now by Jan Fed. Thank you very much. Um, so I will post the URLs. And without further ado, uh, let's start with a round of, of introductions. Um, I will start with Charles because, well, uh, he is representing uh, Zurich, which was the last hackathon. Then we can go for Martin, who's representing the, the Amsterdam hackathon of the previous years, uh, the previous year. And then we can continue with the rest of you. Okay? So, Charles, please. Okay. So I'm Charles Andres. I'm the chief science officer of Wikimedia CH. So the last organizer of uh, Wikimedia hackathon this year in Zurich. Um, I think it's all, and uh, I'm here to answer to the question of uh, uh, people willing to organize or thinking to organize uh, uh, next European hackathon. Um, my name is uh, Maarten Dommers. Uh, you might know me by my nickname, Multichill. Uh, I organized the uh, hackathon in Amsterdam uh, last year, and I participated in many uh, previous hackathons. Hi. Just go ahead. Don't be shy. Well, uh, we are just uh, in the round of introductions. So, really, you start. Who wants to step in? Hey, guys. I'm uh, John Fred. Yeah, I know I'm next, Martin. Uh, I'm from Wikimedia France, and uh, we are, uh, I've participated to the two last hackathon in Zurich and Amsterdam, and in Berlin as well. And I serve on the board, and we're interested in making it happen in France, maybe. Uh, you're muted. Jan? Okay, that didn't work. Kim, you're muted yourself, so we can't hear you. Okay. Maybe uh, uh, Pep can go next. Yes, let's do this. Pep, please. All right. Nicolo, please. Yeah, okay. I'm Nicolo. Yeah, my I'm Nicola. not particularly good. Sorry about that. Sorry. I'm here on behalf of... 
Okay, sorry, I'm Nicola Caranti, I'm from Wikimedia Italy, I'm from Trento, I will be interested in organizing um, the hackathon here in Trento, in Northern Italy, and as uh, Wikimedia Italy, yeah, we are, we are looking for what's needed and uh, things like that. All right, uh, Michelle? Hi, I'm Michal uh, Lester, and Ken David is also with me. We're from uh, Wikimedia Israel. We are would like to find out if we will, we we are not sure yet if we are interested in that or not. We would like to have some more information before we will take the decision. Thank you. Very good. Jan, do you think that now you appear as muted? Okay, try now. Hello? Uh, well, Jan, you do have a problem with your mic. Uh, so, uh, Chen? Chen, we don't hear you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Alexander. Hi, I'm Alex from Wikimedia Austria, and we're pretty sure we don't um, do the, Wiki, uh, the hackathon next year, but we're interested in 2016. Okay, okay, very good. Okay, second round, Pep. Hello, uh, I am here from Amical Wikimedia. We are planning. All right. So we still. So Jan, do you think do you think it will work? Otherwise, uh, Jan, uh, last attempt. Okay. Okay, Jan from Wikimedia Sverige, sorry for my pronunciation, Sweden, is interested in hosting next year. All right. All right, well, then, uh, what is next year? Next year is 2015 uh, in all European time zones. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's do something, let's just start. So basically, we have this hackathons page, which doesn't say much about organizing a hackathon. It, as, as of today, defines basically the, the framework for, for that. So please, just uh, shoot your questions, and at least uh, uh, Charles, Martin, and me should be able to, to answer. Maybe you have uh, better answers for some questions. Okay, maybe hey. it's better to do the questions also on the Etherpath, so we can you can moderate them. Uh, yes, there's only a certain amount of screens I can deal at the same time because people are pinging me now on IRC. So um, I have I have now to pay attention to someone else that is uh, on IRC trying to join. So please, if you can ask just the first question and then can I start? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, my first question is uh, how many people are expected uh, to attend? So many beds, basically, and um, are needed, and obviously, how many pl uh, places in the rooms are needed? Mm, the trend, I would say, to, to make it easy, I would say plan for 200, although we haven't got 200 until now. Uh, I would say we had around 180 max. And even in that case, those 180 doesn't come usually. You never find, find them at the same time. So uh, it is as compared to other events, it's relatively relaxed as long as you do all your homework and the logistics are in place. But I don't know. I don't know, uh, Charles Martin. I don't know if you agree with with this or you want to comment. I would aim at 115, nothing more. Because if it gets bigger, uh, it's gets too impersonal, gets too big, and uh, it's harder to organize. 
What is That's what we have. Uh, we had the last couple of years. Uh, m maximum 150. Didn't we have 200 at the Easter egg? So I read no, that. No, 165, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, or something just uh, over 165. Okay, so not forget 200. Let's say 175, so to say. Uh, I mean, the thing is that it's a bit difficult to control. Some people will not show up. And some others will just appear there, depending on how reachable is your location. So, but I think the, those are good numbers: 150, 175. Um, if we talk about Zurich, uh, what we have done with Kim and the other organizer, uh, organizer was to target being able to uh, welcome between 150 and 200, in case we are, we got a good. Uh, response from the community. It really depends of the, of the hot topic of the moment. So being able to, uh, to host everybody, but yeah, optima, uh, optimum looks like to be between 150 and 180. Uh, this is Michal and Michel. We would like to know uh, for how many, for how long in advance, what what is required, how many, how much manpower, paid manpower, and volunteer manpower is needed to organize the hackathon, uh, the space, what kind of space are you looking for, uh, should it be an open uh, uh, a launch, an open room, or it can be in separate small rooms. Um, is there needed any other activities to, say, uh, to be beside the hackathon? Let's start with that. Um, I I didn't quite understand the question. Sorry. I, I, personally, I didn't understand it. I was uh, there was some problems with the noise. Okay. Uh, I think Michelle uh, was uh, asking for the manpower needed to organize the hackathon. So in the case of, of Zurich, it was really few um, volunteer time. Uh, almost everything has been done by uh, uh, Kim team and uh, the Wikimedia CH staff. And even during the, um, the event, uh, there wasn't a need of uh, a volunteer, especially. It's what is good with the hackathon is that uh, the homework to do, it's quite clear. Uh, not so easy, but it's really clear. And uh, during the, the event itself, uh, it's a lot of self-organization. So it's really be present to help. But uh, it's I, uh, the balance between the workload and the output is really favorable. <laughs> really good event. Same goes for Amsterdam. Uh, one uh, uh, thing that uh, really makes a difference is who is doing the program, because that can be uh, uh, can be a time investment. But uh, the foundation is also supporting in that. So, but organizing the event itself is really uh, a really small group and not a lot of work. Especially if your uh, chapter already has an office, it's excellent because the volunteers can just focus on the big things and the office can take care of the logistics. Yeah, so usually for the local organizer, there's, there's the, the program. So program and participation are two things that scare them a bit because, you know, there's an international audience. Nobody can follow Wikitech L and this area, media wiki development on a daily basis, etc. But usually that is the part that, that the community with the help of the foundation is mostly solving. So the local organizer needs to make sure that there is a good venue, the transport, transport and, and accommodation is solved, uh, catering, you know, and um, there's, there's a one point that it's important is, is support for travel of sponsor participants and, and visas. Those, so this, this is usually more work than expected and for that it is good to have I don't know, like a travel agency or someone really dedicated to 
to that. So, so in Amsterdam, uh, one of people at our office had uh, did a lot of travel arrangements in her previous job, so she just did that part. But uh, it's really nice to have a couple of experienced people because that really makes a difference between spending only a couple of hours or spending many, many hours. Okay, more questions. I see one on the Etherpad. Uh, what kind of rooms are needed? Do you want to answer? Sure. Uh, it's uh, what we had in Switzerland and also in Amsterdam is you'd need at least one big room to get everyone in uh, for the opening and the closing and etc. And you want to have a, a couple of breakout rooms. Uh, the exact composition, I'm not sure if it matters that much, as long as, as you have uh, lots of different rooms. Uh, I think people will adapt to what you have at some point. I think in Switzerland, what was it again, uh, Shell? Uh, three breakout rooms? Uh, one, two. Yeah, exactly. Three, three small rooms in addition to the main one. And, and uh, I really liked the lobby. It was really yeah. good. And exactly. Um, you need versatility in the space, and the lobby was really good for that because there was place, it was quiet, and um, several other spaces where people can organize um, spontaneously a small meeting or a small hacking session. Mm. I think it's, yeah, the main room maybe is the biggest challenge because you, uh, you need to fit um, everybody inside, everybody with a computer, maybe. Uh, a tablet, maybe a smartphone, so yeah, this room can be challenging and after you need versatility and uh, being able to adapt uh, um, to the spontaneous uh, willing, willing of the participant. And it's really nice if your tables etc are flexible so people will just start moving around making uh, corners etc and they'll figure it out and uh, the room shouldn't be too noisy, the main room, because you have multiple groups all talking, and if it's really noisy, the main room, that's impossible. In Switzerland, what we made is to basically save the whole um, uh, use of uh, for us, and um, so there, was, there were no other guests, or really few, uh, and it helped us to, to maintain a, a good ambience without too many uh, noise. I just posted a note. Manuel Schneider, the main organizer of the last hackathon in Turkey, is trying to join, but the hangout is full. I didn't know that with 10 people you make a full room. So considering that the video stream is it's available. Uh, I don't know if it's too much to ask someone to just move to the Hangout page and listen from there. Um, because Manuel, uh, I'm sure he has interesting things to say here in this Q&A. Um, Alexander, do you mind? Or Jan, do you mind? Jan can't talk anyway, so we should just kick him out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah, okay, good. But I can leave, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, Jan. <laughs> Jan is out. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm asking now Manuel to join. I don't know. I didn't know about this limitation. Anyway, in a, another, another question. So one thing about, uh, apart from the rooms, I think it's very important to be in good sync with the owners of the space. Um, it makes a whole difference when it is, hi Manuel, it makes a whole difference when it's, uh, your, I don't know, for instance, a university just leaving you on a weekend with some keys and, you know, it's up to you. Or, or it's uh, 
perhaps small organization, but still a valuable, valuable uh, venue, that they like the project, they think it's important for their own purposes, and they get involved, and they are there. It, it, it's really, it really makes a difference. Um, the recent case of the Tuli Hackathon, I, th I think it was a success because the hostel, even if there were some little things, and there's going to always be little things, but all in all, they were there, available, supportive, and, and that was very good. There are some more questions on the Etherpad, okay? So which one do okay. you want to do first? I'm still with 1,000. So, is access 24 hours to facilities necessary? Well, 24 hours probably it's too much. However, there's people. Well, they need to be open really late. I mean, a venue kicking people off at 6 p.m. is not going work to work. 8 p.m. No, even 10 p.m. Not really. I would say that at least midnight, but I have to say that in Zurich you could walk at 1 and 2 p.m. and still would be people around. Also, 4 p.m. Yeah. and 5 p.m., I think. <laughs> yes, yes. So, of course, these 24 hours, I mean, doesn't need to be the whole venue. Uh, maybe, maybe you know, you just agree that there's going to be a, a specific room with capacity for, I don't know, 20, 30 people, and that's going to be open. Uh, 24 hours with good connection. But doing it in a hostel is really a plus. Uh, I really consider that one of the, the, the big pluses compared to other hackathons. It's yes. so much easier and you don't waste a lot of time on other things. You can just really focus. Yeah, hostel meaning that the accommodation and the venue happens, you know, in the same place, or at least across the street, or something that you don't have to take, you know, a bus or walk 25 minutes or things like that. You know, it is. It really makes a difference when, when I don't know, you feel tired and you say, "Oh, I'll go to my room and have a shower," and then after the shower, "Oh, this is boring here. I'll just go back." <laughs> I think it's really different to um, a conference like the Wikimedia conference. You really need to have a venue that allow people to to do what they want, but in the scope of the conference. It's not you have the program from 9 to 20, to 8 in the evening, and after people do what they want in the uh, as spare time. In a hackathon, people want to work. It's <laughs> They want to have... Uh, a connection and a room to work. So I would say you need to target the 24 hours opening. If it's not possible well, at the end, it, it may be not the, um, the biggest problem. But when you plan it, I think it's important to plan it like this. Yes, fully agree. So let's not forget, this is a, well, it, it is strictly not an unconference, but it's a very flexible event. And for most of the people, they don't even care much about the program. They care about who comes. And, and, and actually, the interesting part of the program is to see which kind of proposals come, come up. So people can say, OK, so I'll take the chance then to meet these guys that I'm working with online, usually. And the consequence of this is that when these people meet, they don't Basically, they they don't get tired of working together. Of course, not everybody uh, always, but but yes, uh, the schedule you know from 9 a.m. to whatever 6 p.m. It is an important part of the event, very important. But from 6 p.m. I would say to 4 p.m. <laughs> it is also very important. So, uh, Kim, I have Rachel on the chat. Uh, she's wondering if she should join, too. Ah, well, um, yeah, I don't think we should kick another person. But I think uh, I think I can. I don't want to kick someone, uh, a potential organizer. So I think I, I can sync with, with, with Rachel, and she can. 
She's watching the video now, so... Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know what this limitation of, of 10 speakers, really. So maybe we can go to the next speak, uh, question. It's how much bandwidth is needed. Uh, that's up to you, Manuel. Uh, well, I can say you can do it with free megabit. Yeah. It's all about reliability. It doesn't really... I'd rather have like 3 megabit of really reliable co connection than a really big pipe that keeps acting up. Yeah, what, what we did, we talked to the UFOSTEL and they were very helpful because they agreed to upgrade the line. We had to pay that extra and unfortunately upgrading the line only gave us 3 megabit but uh, still um, we we had to to bring in a lot of Wi-Fi gear. Um, they were also very helpful with that because they allowed us to um, remove their own Wi-Fi to use the cabling in the building. So we just put our own switch, our own router in the server room, and use the cabling in the building to hook up our own. Uh, Wi-Fi gear, we had 13 access points around, well, in fact, 26, because each access point was having uh, two Wi-Fi uh, interfaces with 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, and, um, and we had the router, which has a lot of quality of service, so obviously, if you have the option to get 10 or 20 megabit, please do so. The free was really, really the I would say like the rock button. It did work. We had even people doing hangouts during the peak times, so I was surprised because this I didn't uh, expect with only three megabit. Yeah, about the same in Amsterdam. We just had a bit more bandwidth. I think we had 200 mbit or something. All right. Um, next question then. International travel, how much is considered acceptable? Um, I, I think the budget part, but the f doesn't the foundation uh, cover the uh, budget? OK, but this is not international travel. This is sponsored travel. No? Uh, no, I meant in time, time-wise, because uh, Ah, okay. All right. Yes, this is a this is a bit tricky. Then again, maybe not. So it is true that, of course, people prefer to go to well-connected cities where, ideally, they just take one flight and land, take up some train, and they land to the venue. Um, however, this this is a way also of discriminating many amazing potential venues and amazing potential teams, uh, local communities. So in the, in the hackathon, in the hackathon page in MediaWiki.org, uh, there's a mention of, of uh, a willingness to, willingness to balance experimentation with short bets. So I don't know, Amsterdam is a short bet because uh, they, they have an international airport. Um, everybody is fine flying to Amsterdam, apparently. Uh, while there might be other venues that, no, it, it might imply like uh, a second flight or even after you land to some airport, then you have to reach uh, a smaller city. I would say that, well, don't, don't make it too difficult. Let's, uh, let's avoid that plan of, I don't know, some remote, remote refuge in the Alps. But uh, still, um, I would say, I, th I think there needs to be some, if there's a good reason, I, I think we are willing to, to consider other options less convenient for international travelers. And I think you should take into account in how flexible it is, because everyone will arrive on their own time and leave on their own time. So you want to be somewhere where you have public transport or something else to get out or get in. Like in Zurich, everyone can just walk to the S-Bahn and take a train. But if you're in the middle of nowhere and you have to arrange something with shared buses, etc., it gets really complicated. So basically, you need public transport. I would say if you have a 
a train or other type of public transport, mass public transport available like once an hour between the venue and the airport, it should be fine. I mean, in Zurich, you even had to change at the main station to another train. And uh, I think most of the people actually arrived at the venue without getting lost. Negotiable. That's probably the answer. And uh, Manuel did say that, uh, if I got it correctly, venue airport should be a connection every hour or so. And how, how long? Um, would you have any hard line or not really? That was just uh, something I made up. I would say once an hour seems to be uh, uh, an acceptable schedule. I mean, I don't say it must be by the hour. Uh, depends on the other circumstances. Um, uh, how long? It depends. I mean, I'm, I'm now going away. Oh, for a hypothetical. Uh, uh, what are you thinking of, Jean Frederic? Some bounty islands in the middle of nowhere, or France has some territories no, I, I overseas. You. We we considered that that Rio uh, or Martinique would be nice. Yeah. It would be nice indeed. We were considering Saint Malo, in fact, which is in Brittany. It's um, it's a bit more than three hours from uh, Roissy, Paris airport. So I, I, I think it needs the every every factor counts in a context. So uh, if you're thinking on that place, I guess there's because there's a reason for that. If the reason is that there's a vibrant local community uh, of of MediaWiki developers, then you know, for instance, I'm just uh, then that would be different. And uh, maybe there's other cities very well connected, but but really there's no no nobody there. Uh, I don't know. There's as I said, there's many many factors, uh, and we are willing to discuss possibilities openly. Okay. So the next question is. Is what's the recommended duration? Uh, I assume of the hackathon, right? Whoever put the question there, not of the travel. If it's I a hackathon, mm. the duration. The, the normal program is like everyone uh, gets in like Thursday nights, and Friday, Saturday, Sunday has an actual program, and people leave on Sunday night. Yeah. And that's been like that for, for years and also for similar events. If you do it longer, people will have a hard time getting uh, time off from work or for, from school. If you do it shorter, it's not really worth going all the way uh, to the hackathon. Yes, and, and it's probably only on Saturday morning, midday, when you have everybody, because then there's several people that cannot come on Friday. They will come on Friday night, perhaps. And then there's other people that will leave early on Sunday also because of flights connections or, or what. Good. Mm. What criteria are used for selection of the host country and when should they be achieved before Wikimedia? Uh, it's, the very, it's the very first time that we run this process. Um, we don't know the answer. Actually, well, I would like that the answer was common sense. So ideally, ideally there would be no selection to make because as part of this conversation, um, some venues would think, well, some, some candidates would think, oh, well, uh, I don't know, maybe next year. Or this year we are still not that, uh, we don't have all the elements in place. Uh, while others, uh, maybe they have been thinking already, or I don't know, for some reason they, they have a strong position, and, and then we all agree that, yes, let's bring it to this place, and something like that. Like in many Wikimania areas, cooperation is better than competition, if possible. Um, but when did you guys start organizing this hackathon? We for last year we started somewhere in January, so it took us like almost half a year. But that was like laid back schedule. 
actually, I think organizing a hackathon is like organizing a wedding. You need to start one year before to save the place and yeah. find the sponsors. And after, you have to work the six months before. And um, um, it's not a big budget uh, comparing to the other budget for a Wikimedia, Wikimedia event. But uh, Akatan has a high imp uh, potential of being uh, sponsored by uh, uh, IT company and etc. And for example, us, we start too late to ask for sponsors. And uh, we, we may have received really more sponsors if we start nine months, between nine months and 12 months to request. So you can organize in six months. But if you start one year before, or nine months before, uh, it's it's not really a lot of work in addition, but a lot of results uh, and uh, facility um, in yeah. results. Yeah, the save the date is really important because people are really aiming at it. So what weekend it go, it's going to be? And, and this, this bit about deciding in Wikimania, which is not written in stone, it's a wish. Um, Basically, it's for two reasons. One reason is because, well, it is assumed that that potential candidates will be in Wikimedia, so it's a good place to discuss uh, without hangout limits and things like that. And and also because, well, if you do the numbers, you will need funding. So once a, once a host is decided, then that host needs to prepare a budget present it to the foundation or no. It's not the FDC, it is another, uh, I, I forgot the process. I, I answered this it in depends. an email. It depends if you're a FDC uh, country, you have to uh, put it in your FDC application. Uh, otherwise, no, you no, no, can no. ask to the event um, funding. No, this is something that we have changed. Uh, okay. Precisely, precisely to avoid dependencies with chapter. Uh, you want to be a we on boss. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> uh, I, I replied already this in the mailing list. I okay. cannot Sorry, go I on miss an it. email. But there's a process basically to isolate the budget of the hackathon, and this is something new this year. The um, grant. Regular grant. Right. Well, yeah, like a grant. Yes. And, and the purpose of that is, the, is to avoid the problem of the hackathon being part of the budget of the chapter, and then the chapter by January getting just a percentage of all the money they requested, and then other people coming to you saying, hey, uh, your hackathon, you need also to cut a percentage of your budget. Uh, now this is detached. It, uh, uh, but basically, what I want to say when it comes to the site at Wikimania is because if, if at Wikimania we decide a host, then there's time enough to present a proposal for a grant, do all the discussion, all the processing, and, and then get that budget eventually approved. Um, if, if we wait more, then it starts to be a bit challenging for, uh, you know, like booking a venue and things like that. In terms of budget, maybe we should add some figures. Uh, our initial budget was about almost 80,000 francs, but that was only the expenses. So that is basically the liquidity you need to have uh, over the process. Uh, the actual budget was about 45,000 francs in the end, actual expenses on the uh, conference. Uh, the 45,000 mean that uh, already deducted the amounts that the chapters have paid for their own uh, accommodation, etc. So you have but your budget. You have your budget public somewhere. Zurich, Amsterdam. Uh, Zurich will be in two weeks in the quarterly report. Uh, Amsterdam, I have a Google Doc with everything in it, and I think you can also see that, Kim. But I'm not sure if we have, uh, have a published version of that. It's probably good uh, to have Wikimedia Nederland do that, so other chapters know uh, what we spent on that. 
It's probably hidden in some yearly report in Dutch, so nobody can read it. I the 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 figures in our case are not yet completely fixed. Uh, just minor details with the UFOS the invoice is still not correct, so uh, that, that might change. But this is something to be sorted out this week. Um, and, and then I think we should publish uh, the at least the, the the global budget. I have uh, shared. Uh, an extract of it with the Italian team. They asked me to do so, so I gave them just the, the lines without the details. Okay. So in the meantime, I think it's safe that any any potential organizer, please contact Manuel and Martin uh, for numbers. Uh, if they are not fully public, it's just because of I guess process. But there's no reason not to share those numbers. Exactly. I also have budget from Berlin as well, somewhere. I can find that. We should probably aim at just publishing everything that's not secret. So maybe for Berlin, for Amsterdam, and for Zurich, that gives a good overview, because I think uh, Zurich is by far the most expensive city, and Berlin the most cheap, uh, the cheapest. So it gives a good idea of how much money you have to spend. Okay, so everything that is public means everything except your night parties, Martin. Is that right? No, those were sponsored. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They were um, actually sponsored. We had a grand, uh, Google paid us for the social part. Uh, no more questions in the either part. Um, one question I have, and let me share it with you, is I wonder how are we going to decide? And I really think it would be good that between the venues, there's a bit of communication, dialogue, because I'm sure that some venues have more interest than others. So some organizers have more interest than others. Some organizers are more ready than others. Uh, for, inst for instance, I mean, one factor that comes to mind is, uh, have you participated in previous hackathons? So have you seen them uh, in action, as opposed to just read about them? Um, so I really hope that the selection process, that you will take part in the selection process as well. And we should book already sometime in, in the Wikimania hackathon. I think it's a natural time for that. But I will get in touch with all of you about this. Any more questions? Still 10 minutes left. Should we, I mean, you just mentioned that we should meet at the Wikimania Hackathon. I mean, shouldn't we go do and propose a session or something to invite everyone who has been on this call and anyone else that might be interested to come? Because then we could discuss uh, further things and also just have a look at budgets, etc., instead of just talking about them. Uh, yes, but I expect, so yes, um, but I really expect potential organizers to do some homework uh, before the hackathon, meaning in the next two weeks. At least, I don't know, things like if, if you're organizing this as, as, as a chapter, making sure that the chapter is uh, all in with this proposal, um, things like that. I really, if, if we cannot decide, must be for a good reason, but I, I'm, I'm still hoping that we can decide the next candidate, the next location. OK, uh, uh, one question. Yep. Um, to, to past organizers of uh, Akasons, what would you what would you have done differently now that you have organized it, now that you know what, uh, 
what what would you change to what you you have done? It's maybe a big question. Uh, for me, as an um, overall organizer, uh, only two things. Starting to look for sponsor earlier and contact Google really earlier because we, uh, we had really good opportunity with the local Google office after the hackathon. So uh, we win uh, during the hackathon and after, but if we had been able to bring the Google developers during the hackathon, it would have been really awesome. But me, I'm really happy with the hackathon, and we can talk about a lot of details, but uh, overall it was good for really nothing my, my major to change. Martin? Um, I, I think uh, the part we weren't that happy about was uh, the program. Uh, it, it worked, but we, uh, in hindsight, we wanted to uh, would have spent more time on getting a better program and getting it more together. Mm -hmm. Well, well, I think um, what the, I think one of the important points uh, Charles already said about the sponsorship. And, um, the second is. Uh, I would have met the IT guy from the youth hostel earlier to find out about the free megabit and uh, and find out about the other uh, existing options. If we had more time, maybe we could have arranged something else. But in the beginning, they just promised us, yeah, it's all all right. We are going to upgrade, and it's all okay. And we already have uh, broadband, and yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I also think that, well, uh, my experience is based on Zurich only because I missed Amsterdam, but I think uh, putting more effort with the local developer community, even if they are not related to Wikimedia. That, I mean, for while for all the visitors it is a Wikimedia event, for the organizers it, 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 it is a chance to grow your technical community and to strengthen your links with other open source projects. Like, it was good, for instance, to have the OpenStreetMap uh, open people in, in the event, and there was a, like, I don't guess, I don't think it's a coincidence, but there was, uh, because in, in Zurich you have, like, what's the director, or, like, the guy, the OpenStreetMap uh, project lead, or something like that. So, chairman of the foundation. Chairman, thank you very much. Chairman of the foundation. So I think... Uh, you might have a very good hackathon that comes, happens, and then leaves, and leaves no trace. And that would be good, but it could be better if after the hackathon, then there's some process there uh, in, your, in your city, in your country, that where, where the hackathon made a difference. And now you can grow that, that community. Um, one thing that I would say, um that would help out organizers. I've been involved in the last three uh, European hackathons and also the last two Wikimania hackathons and then also a couple internal uh, foundation hackathon-like events. And pretty much everything that we do has already been figured out. It's, there's a process in place and, it's, um, and it works really well. And in Zurich, I think like it was a culmination of the last couple years, like lessons learned plus um, new ideas. And so whenever you're, um, you know, kind of stumped on what to do, it's already been done and there's already documentation and already forms and surveys and everything that you need to send out to people or ways to communicate information. Um, so you, you don't have to come up with everything new uh, every time. It's, it's already, um, I mean, I think that's what this call is about. But, I mean, even more so, it's just asking questions instead of trying to reinvent everything. Very good advice. All right. Um, I think uh, this session has been very useful uh, for those of us participating here and whoever else you want to convince to organize a hackathon. 
Uh, if you have more questions, um, Wikitech L is the natural place for that, or the Hackathons Wiki page. Or you can also find ways to, well, I mean, you, it's easy to find us if you also want to ask questions, uh, like not, not sharing them in a mailing list. Although we prefer public channels because then one answer is good for everyone. Will everyone be in uh, London? <laughs> yes, I guess. So, see you all there. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, so thank you very much. And thank you. See you around. Thank you. By the thank way, you. by the way, if you need uh, documents, uh, just check the category Wikimedia Hackathon Zurich 2014. I have put the visa welcome letter and the name tag and badge, etc. They are all there as well. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.